Hey, it's Will. So yeah, sometimes you gotta make your own rules and just explore things imperfectly. And I wanna show you an example of that in multiple ways. I'm gonna read you something, which sounds like it might be boring, right, for me to just read something. But I think it's gonna connect with a lot of you. So what this is, is I sometimes respond to people's emails. Like when I sign up for someone's email list and they send me their you know, automated emails, sometimes I just respond. And I decided to do that just today. And I actually sent like a decently long but heartfelt response to someone. And it connected with them and they responded and said, wow, this is so well written and, and uh, you need to share this somewhere. So I thought, I think a lot of you guys will probably resonate with this message because it's basically about not waiting till you are dying to start living, which is such a common thing. There's so many cliches about it, but here's my take on it. So the quick context is this guy was talking about his daughter and how when his daughter was born and he didn't have money to pay for bills, the main thing that kept him going, his motivation was, I need to feed my daughter. He gave his daughter the nickname Peanut when she was born. And so he even wrote a note to himself that says, feed the peanut. So literally like the meaning of his life, at least this is how I interpret the email, was, you know, take care of this little being he, he created, this, this daughter. And so I don't have kids, but I did want to tell him about what my peanut was. So that's my email here. So let me read it to you. So and I, again, just responded randomly to this person I don't really know. Um, which is risky, right? But I decided what the hell. So here's the email. At the risk of becoming a crazy rambling email and oversharing, here's some of my story persp or perspective typed in one fell swoop imperfectly. Take it as you will. No need to read or respond. But if you want insight into one reader's mind, here you go. <laughs> I suppose for me, my peanut is my future deathbed self and wanting to feed it satisfying retrospection instead of irreparable regret. Realizing that life is short and I have only one life. Well, most likely one life, haha. <laughs> but I'm acting like it's only one life. So I started prioritizing long-term risk over short-term risk. In other words, I quit my nice engineering job at Boeing, I sold all my belongings, I moved back in with my parents, and I invested all my money in self-improvement and marketing education. Still, I got tripped up with periods of fear and inaction. I'm imperfect and I messed up plenty. And I wasted months of time, mainly via inaction and fear. But because I went all in, I eventually further exposed my excuses and my avoidance. And with the walls closing in financially and removing my victim excuses one by one as well, I had nowhere to hide, no one to blame. And when I realized I still felt weirdly calm about my life turning into risk and chaos to most outside observers, that's when I was able to begin shifting in a deeper way because that exposure helped me realize that it's not up to the rest of the world to motivate me to action through compliance or consequence for me to be in victim for me to be reacting my way through life in a low level of consciousness because i often resent that authority anyway and often i can creatively find a way out so reacting to and avoiding consequence tends to keep me in low level survival. Instead, it's up to me to proactively realize I only have this one life and to connect with my mortality, the ultimate urgency. To see beyond the cliches, euphemisms, and distractions and continually renew my presence for this beautiful fleeting gift I have. And while most consequences won't kill me now, the regret for myself down the road could be terrible and unavoidable if I stay in denial and in action. In action. And that's a terrible cost when I am actually present to it. It's so easy to fall asleep and wake up again months or years later not knowing where the time went. So. I reconnected with that little voice inside of me again. 
I tuned out the fires and the shiny objects of the world. And I gained a lot clearer vision about what I will tolerate in my life versus what I won't. And I leapt into action according to that vision without knowing where I would land. And I'm still leaping now, every day. So we'll see where I end up. I'm in this for the long haul, even through the rough short-term challenges that may and already have popped up. As a mentor of mine, Ryan Levesque says, the name of the game is to stay in the game until you win the game. And whether it's a future child of mine or another person I care about or caring about myself, I think that maybe deepening into that caring, caring to the point of breaking ourselves for something or someone, that might be what helps flip the switch into going all out in this crazy game called life that we have such a short time in anyway. I think it's a choice to say that we matter, that I matter, that you matter, and that we're going to choose to make this experience matter, that everyone's experience matters and is real. To be present to the pain and imperfection while also creating a compelling vision to see beyond it all and lovingly and firmly and legitimately also making life more awesome and caring no matter how tough it gets. I guess that was the end of it. Will. I signed off and I said, P.S. This is one of those things where I realize it's a bit out of place for me to send this rarely, fairly raw and unedited wall of text, given that we don't know each other and you are a badass whose time I don't want to waste. I'll trust that it either connected or it didn't, and things are good either way. No need to respond, by the way. And I wish you the best either way. Okay, I'm gonna hit send now. I'm gonna hit send now. Keep doing your badass things because they matter. You matter. And then yeah, I sent the email. I didn't really edit it, I typed it quick. You know, I edited it a tiny bit as I went, but the point is, just connect. Connect to other people, connect to your future self. Beyond all the BS, beyond all the rules that the world makes up, all the consequences, figure out what you want for you to live a good life. And don't let fear and inaction steal that away from you. Because my belief is that as we get older, as we get closer to death, all of that noise will disappear and fall away and we'll be left with knowing deeply that little quiet voice inside of ourselves that knows whether we really went for the things that we wanted, even if it came at great cost and it was scary and risky, or if we took just the safe, comfortable path, which was only safe in the short term and ended up costing us everything in the long term. So that's my message for you today is in any area of your life, yes, this can apply to accent, but it's something much bigger. Consider the difference between short-term risk, which is looking bad, making a fool of yourself, being rejected, maybe even like messing up your career, having things that affect you on the scale of the next few years of your life. Or maybe it's only the next few minutes or hours. Any of this from the next few minutes, hours, years, to me, that's all short-term. Short-term risk. Let's distinguish short-term risk from long-term risk, which is you towards the end of your life, whenever that happens, hopefully that's a long time from now, but we never know, you towards the end of your life, knowing that you didn't get what you wanted. You didn't try, you didn't see, because you were scared and focused on staying safe in the short term. So short-term risk versus long-term risk. I have been changing my life, <laughs> which is not everyone does this, but this is my message to you, right? You don't have to follow this, but this is what I highly recommend, highly suggest, is start getting in touch with that future version of your, yourself, your deathbed self, your 80-year-old self, your 90-year-old, 100-year-old self, and how you're gonna be reflecting on your life. And a lot of those short-term pains will be very small when you look back on them. It'll be more about the things that you didn't do, the things that you tried, 
the things that you accomplished, the adventures that you went on, what you learned, the things that you shared with people before it was too late. So this is a wake up call uh, on a Sunday afternoon for all of you in my audience. Hopefully some of this connected with you. Um, and yeah, let me know if any of this resonated. I think it's important. I often struggle with connecting with it, but I come in and out of it. And I think the more that we talk about this and come back to it, the uh, better chance we have of waking up and caring and coming back to that. We're imperfect, right? We're gonna come in and out. Sometimes we'll care, sometimes we'll be horrible human beings. We're gonna oscillate in and out. But the more time we can spend creating that opening and riding that wave and caring and feeling the pain, but still caring, and trying to make things as awesome as they can be, I think the better off we're all gonna be because it's a choice. So yeah, a little bit of a different video today, but that's my call to action for all of you in all of your life in whatever way. Connect with your future self because that's what's gonna matter at the end of the day, that little voice inside of you. You can't lie to yourself, that little voice is still going to be there late in your life and you're going to know the truth of whether you went for what you wanted or whether you were scared and never tried. So connect with that voice because it's you. That's the most personal, I think the most important thing that you can connect with beyond anyone else's opinion of yourself or recommendation for you. So that's my invitation to you is connect with that little voice so that you can live your best life, whatever that means. Don't let fear hold you back. All right, wherever you're watching, if you resonated with it, yeah, leave a comment, let me know, or email me privately, DM me, whatever. But um, yeah, wish you the best. Un abrazo. Te mais.